Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in to another Rena K Designs YouTube video. I don't know why I said it like that. Today I am working on a card that I posted a couple days ago in the Gina K Stamp TV and Friends forum. If you're not a part of it, please join. It's a little complicated of a card. There's a lot of steps, a lot of different materials used in it, but it ends up being a really pretty window glossy effect kind of card. And I think it's really fun. It uses the Autumn Wreath Builder. And there's so much hair in my mouth all the time. I don't have my AC on. I don't know why there's a draft in here. But if you guys are interested in this incredibly complicated card, keep on watching. Okay, so I know there's a lot of products around here but don't worry there's more we are going to start off with this stamp set this is called window of wishes and i've taken the liberty of already stamping the curtains and cutting them out because it takes a really long time and it's really tedious and i just you know i figured you guys would know how i cut this out it's a lot of stress it's a lot of swearing and it's a lot of crying when you mess up but to cur oh my boyfriend just texted me great ruined that so to create this effect on here, I use this... James, shut up! So to create this effect on here, as you can see, like it's like swirly, I use this Gina K background stamp, and I stamped it on the piece of colored paper, and then I cut out around the stamp after... Okay, well, I stamped the background image in um, Honey Mustard, and then I stamped the curtain outside with the dark chocolate color, and then I cut it out around it. So you can't really see the um, design on the outside, so that's good. But then I colored it in with some Copic markers and just gave it some definition. So that is already finished, so I don't have to worry about that. Oh, except for the fact that I just threw it across the room. As I mentioned, we are using honey mustard. We are also using warm cocoa. This one's dark chocolate. This one's charcoal brown. And then this one's faded brick. And we will be using these to create our leaf pattern and the actual windowsill pattern. Right here we have a piece of cardstock that already has the center cut out of it. I use the Gina K Designs and Thermoweb rectangle set of dies and I use the largest size to cut this out. It actually did make the rectangle pattern as you can see here and you can save it for other projects or let your dog chew on it if you want you know which boat I'm probably in and that will be our window shape I already attempted this card using the actual window and it just it just wasn't happening so we're just gonna use that and um, then I have some cardstock and some layering cardstock and then I have some fine detail clear embossing powder and some Versamark to create our other look. Off camera I have the Autumn Wreath Builder which is what we are going to be using for the leaves and then I also have my watercolor set to create the background for the outside of the window and you can use any watercolor set but um, I don't know the name of mine but once we get to the watercoloring part I'll share it obviously. I also need, oh here it is, it's in the trash. So you also need a strip of paper like this to create the bottom of the window part. Just take any scrap from when you're like trimming your paper up and just keep it off to the side. So I think what we're going to start with is the watercoloring because that has to dry and then we will move on to the windowsill. So I have my watercolors off screen right now because I can't fit them in, but we are going to just create a sunset effect and I'm just going to do that by wetting the paper first. This water's a little dirty, but you know what? Sometimes that has to happen. And we're just gonna cover it all over. And you gotta think of the frame of the window is probably gonna be about right here. So just make sure you get a full value within that area. But I would just paint the whole thing just to be safe if you're nervous. And so we're gonna start with our lightest color, which is a light yellow. And do that down here. I'm sure you crafters know how to make a sunset using watercolor, but if you don't, it's good to start with a light color and then you can build to the darker one. And now I will do some orangey color, blend it out. You want to make sure that it's wet all the way through. As I've mentioned before, my favorite painting utensil is watercolor paints. Acrylic makes me want to explode. It's very stressful. Can't handle the layering. Not talented enough for it. And now we'll add a little deeper. Ooh, way too much water. Way too much water. It's everywhere. It's soaking. A little bit of red, maybe. Oh, yes. It's like a tangerine twist. And then you can just keep blending it down. And now we can add some red. Oh my gosh. I just 
too aggressive with the water. Okay. I like watercolor because if it goes awry, you can cover it up very easily. Most other paints, there isn't that opportunity for salvation after you've placed the paint. The Virgo painting on the back of my set is actually acrylic paint, and it's really not that elaborate of a painting. It's just a circle, but James can attest. He was there when I painted it, and it took hours to make sure that circle was perfect. I actually ended up having to go outside the lines while painting it too because it ended up like messing up here and there so I was like oh, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Oh, I'll just make extend it a little bit. Ended up being like an inch wider than I intended it to be so you know watercolor it is. Remember sunsets aren't perfect but your watercolor sunset is. So that's a good value. Can I taped it down a little bit with some thermal web tape and now I'm just going to let it dry off to the side so we can um, work on our other stuff. Alright, if you guys notice this mark on my knuckle, I burned it getting my chicken out of the oven earlier. But it's okay. Real crafters don't cry. So I lined up this like border pattern of the window with the top of my hypothetical window. And I'm going to stamp it in dark chocolate. And um, I'm going to flip it, but I didn't measure this perfectly, so I don't even know if this, yeah, so if you want to measure um, your windowsill perfectly, you should, but I did not. So if you do measure it perfectly in the middle, you should be able to just close this and it'll look perfectly on both sides. Some of that tidy towel screech. Just going to line it up again. I have like the bottom line kind of go off the edge because it was too much of a pain to try to like line it up in a way that I could make it right on the edge so no one will ever know. No one will look at it and be like, oh. I don't know if that's what windows actually look like. It could work this way too. This actually looks like kind of a shuttery thing but we're doing this. It's a weird ornate fancy skinny window on both sides so whatever, you know. Do your own thing. Make, th make it up as you go along. Okay, so our next step is to create a wood effect on this, and I don't know how everyone else does it, but this is the technique that I found works the best, so I'm going to start with taking a darker brown Copic marker and using the longer side, or the, the broad side, is that what it's called? I don't know, but the side that has this pointed end. We're just going to make some lines. And then I'm going to take this kind of like burnt orange color and do the same thing. So now I'm going to take this kind of lighter grayish brown. This one's called brown cocoa, I think, yeah. And it's good for layering. Wow, ink just went everywhere. And you're just going to cover over this. And it's not that, like, dark, so, like, it would cover everything. It just kind of, it's, like it's like a wood stain. That's how I think of it. And then you go over it a couple more times. And you can do this as many times as you wish, usually two times, maybe three if you're feeling like you want a real deep wood look. As you can see, that creates kind of a woody effect. And we're going to do this on all the parts of the windowsill and including our little strip of um, white paper. And you can just do that by holding one side and doing it all over. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it takes a while and there's no point in me filming it if I just showed it to you. So here it is all colored in and you might wanna additionally add some color onto the sides here because if you plan to have it off to the side, like the curtain, you're gonna see a little bit of wood right there, but I'm probably gonna bring it in closer because I found that that looks a little better than the example I posted. So I'm probably gonna do that, but it's just a tip. So this is what it looks like. These are these little dots. I think I always get them because my palm gets so sweaty. It's like 90 degrees outside. I just want my crisp fall weather finally, but it's still 90 degrees outside, so I don't know what to do. We will now get on to stamping and embossing our watercolor sheet. So just an example, this is what the sunset uh, gradient will look like and you can move it down or up a little bit. I made this um, sheet of paper three and three quarters by five inches and this one four inches by five and a quarter so they'll layer nicely and um, be careful because sometimes they're still a little wet but um, I dried this as much as I could with a 
um, embossing gun and now we can take our stamps from our wreath builder and start making our leaf patterns. So I'm going to start with this wide kind of maple leaf look. Shout out to Canada. And we're going to use honey mustard to start out. I think we're just going to make them falling all over the place. Oh, yes. I always lose my tidy towel. I usually find it in Mishi's mouth, but... Okay, and now we're going to take this um, other leaf. I don't know what kind of leaf this is, but we're going to use faded brick with it. And don't be afraid to overlap them. Leaves don't fall in an organized pattern. But also, don't be afraid to also space them out. We're going to finish with dark chocolate for our last leaf. It's probably not going to show up if I use um, warm cocoa. So we might not even be using warm cocoa. And remember to stamp lightly because of the leaf veins. I don't want those to cover up. They add a lot to the picture. Someone had to take the time to draw them, so just be gentle. I'll just show you what this looks like within the window. Wow, those look like little mice tails. But um, as you can see, they're all falling into the sunset. Very pretty, very folly. Okay, our next step is to take this tree branch that is in the Window of Wishes set, and we're just gonna create a tree pattern on the outside even though these leaves are not to scale with the corresponding tree branch. It's okay, cards don't need to make sense. Also, I'd like to add that I am using the charcoal brown because it's still brown, but it's a lot darker than the dark chocolate, so it'll make it look more like a silhouette and define it a little more. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we can put a little greeting right there. I always forget about the greeting, but... You know, hi, I'm Rena. That is the extent of our stamping right now, unless you want to add the greeting right now. You know what, let's just add the greeting right now. Let's get it over with. I'm going to add this little family stamp in the charcoal brown, because it'll really pop. There we go. See how pretty that is? Okay, moving on. Before we get to assembly, the last step we have to do is emboss and this will create the effect of a window because I'm gonna make it look like it's half way up because nobody loves that fall breeze coming through your window more than me unless you're living where I am right now and it is 86 outside and there's no such thing okay so we're gonna start by using our dust bag on the paper just to be safe and um, then we're just going to take our verse mark and you're going to find where you want the window to start. Get down on eye level and just start patting along the top part. We're going to cover the entire top part in clear embossing powder. I know this looks intimidating, but trust me, it'll work and look cool. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we'll cover up the line, but just make it pretty close. And now we can cover it in clear embossing powder. Make sure it is not white. Make sure it is clear. Do not make that mistake. You will have a heart attack. Okay, and now I will emboss this and get back to you with the results. So this is what the embossed image looks like, and this looks like me after my first workout back after the summer, but um, it gets a little bent out of shape, but if you have like a corner edge, like at the edge of your desk, you can just push it against it, and it'll, it'll straighten it out a little bit more, but just make sure you really tape all around the edges and really flatten it out. With the amount of layers that we're putting on this card, it won't make it pop out that much. But as you can see, that's a nice like window glare. Kind of looks like a aged window, so it's a cool effect. And now we can begin the assembly of the card. So I think I'm going to start with the window strip of wood, and I'm just going to place that. I should stand up. I'm not new to this stamping game, I know I should stand. And now, we can put that over like this. See how that looks? And I think it's best to put it on this part of the card, because it's going to be hard to run the tape perfectly over the embossed part. 
See, it's a little less curvy, still a little bent out of shape. This is me like day three or four of recovering. I finally have gained feeling back in my calves. A little bit more straight, and you can see how that looks now as the window. And now we can, I think we'll do the curtains next. Actually, no, wait, forget the curtains. We are going to do the rest of the layering first. I don't know why, I, I always have the sheet of paper like this, and I always flip it over, even though it is the same on that side, but you know. I've decided that that is going to be the back, and the other part is going to be the front, and that's final. Well, that was a good one. Glad I got video footage of that. And now we can cover up all this disaster. Okay, hey, there we go. Okay, see, this is me after giving up on working out. Still a little bent out of shape just because working out is never never leaves a good impact on me. See, we're feeling back to normal, ready to get back into it, and ready to do some more calf raises. So, last thing we're gonna do is seal these curtains to the outside. Make sure it's lined up the way you want it. There we go. You can kinda see family now, but it's okay. It's like peeking out of the, the open window, you know? Okay, so I just used a super light peachy color, and I used the same technique with the wood just to create some lines, just to add a little bit of detail. And um, yeah, that's the finished card. So I'm going to show you another card I made, kind of mirroring, mirroring this whole effect. This is a card I made using the Holiday Wreath Builder and um, the same window of wishes set. And as you can see, they are very different in look, but I did the same exact thing. I know... It's not logical to open your window in the winter, but um, sometimes you gotta do it. And you know, as I said before, cards don't have to be realistic, so there you go. So, these are the two cards I made using this style of um, card and these techniques. So, yeah, that's it. So my hair has changed since the beginning of this filming because I had it in a bun while I was working, and now it's ugly, so... Here's proof that I do film the intro, make the card, and then film the outro. With that all aside, this is the finished card. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was really fun to make, and I think it is a really cool technique for creating the effect of a window in any card that you wish, especially with this window of wishes set because it's really cool to do that. So for last week's giveaway, I promised a set of the birthday bash foils that I used to make my birthday card. And the winners of that giveaway who answered the question, what is your birthday, are right here. So if you see your name here, remember to submit I won the Rena K giveaway to info at GinaKDesigns.com and we will send you your foil sheets right away. For this week's giveaway, I am going to be giving away the Window of Wishes set because I think everyone should have this set. I think everyone should have like one of those like things that has like a template and like stuff you can add into it like a jar or a window so we're going to be giving away that set to whoever answers the question what is your favorite season i don't know if i've asked this question already but you know show two different style of season cards so like we're gonna do that so let me know in the comments what your favorite season is mine's fall if it would get freaking nice out but um yeah i like fall because it's my birthday it's school pumpkin spice stuff you know all the basic stuff so let me know and you can possibly win this set so that's all i have for you guys today thank you for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one okay bye